Okay, so we are going to look at the insect exchange system. Okay, now essentially the insect uh, exchange system is if, if we are to draw the body of the insect, okay, uh, and let's say we've got some respiring cells and, and really, you know, um, the, the impact of an exchange system is you can measure it by how effectively you, you can exchange gases with all the cells, even if those cells are far away from the surface of the organism, right? So let's say that that's the body of an insect. Um, it looks like eyes there, but those are the cells way on the inside of the organism, right? And so what you have are these tubes that extend inwards, okay? So you've got large tubes, okay? that they branch okay so they branch and as they branch they get smaller and smaller and smaller and thin thinner as well until like near the cells you know that's that's kind of one kind of one elongated cell okay so that's where we have that All right so you got from the surface you got an opening that opening extends into um, a, a, like a tubular structure, right? So that, that opening is called a spiracle. And that opening uh, then uh, extends into a tube, which we will call... All right, so then we have tracheae. Okay, so here, like here and here, we would have tracheae. Okay, and finally, near nearest to the cells, we will have the kind of thinnest version of these called the tracheoles. Okay, so the like the right of the ends of the branches. Okay, and they're the thinnest structures, one cell thick only. Okay, and they go right through the cells. Okay. Like so. Okay, right now, how does this structure work? Well, what would happen is as the cells are respiring, so let's see if we can zoom in here, right? And I just might decrease my pen size. Do, do, do. They're not right. So what would happen is these cells would be respiring, right? So they are um, producing CO2 so there's a high concentration of CO2 in this area actually let's just change the color it's a high concentration of CO2 right lots of CO2 here and a very low concentration of oxygen right low concentration of oxygen because it's constantly being used up however in because and because of that then there's a low concentration of oxygen in this uh, in the tracheoles right and then therefore oxygen O2 diffuses in so because in the atmosphere remember there's a high concentration of oxygen whereas inside in you know near the cells there's a low concentration of oxygen so oxygen diffuses in through the tracheoles okay right so there we have that and and because of this because of th this the tracheals being near because the tracheals are near the cells because um, the tracheals have a, a very um, thin wall right the thickness of one cell and because they're quite near those respiring cells within the organism because of that there they have a short diffusion distance right there's a short diffusion distance because uh, maintained because of that yeah okay and remember that the that's the one of the three um, key ingredients short diffusion distance high concentration gradient large surface area to volume ratio okay so that's one secondly high concentration gradient. So how, how does the insect 
um, gas exchange system maintain a, a, a high concentration gradient? Well, remember that the atmospheric oxygen is going to be high, thanks to all the photosynthesis by the plants, right, in, on Earth. And so there's a high concentration of oxygen in the atmosphere. However, the cells, they're respiring. So the, the, the more the activity, um, the, the more activity that the insect is carrying out, the lower the concentration of oxygen. So, you know, the oxygen concentration will be low here. Carbon dioxide concentration will be high here. So automatically, because in the atmosphere, relatively, um, there's a low concentration of oxygen, right? So what happens is, there's a low concentration of oxygen within the, within, within the cells and the fluid around the cells and there's a high concentration of oxygen in, in the tracheal. So here we have a high concentration of oxygen whereas in the fluid and the cells there's a low concentration of oxygen so there's going to be a diffusion of oxygen in this direction from the tracheals into the fluid, from the tracheals into the cells Okay, but CO2, which has got a high concentration in the fluid, a high concentration in the cells, but a low concentration in the tracheals, that is going to be diffusing into the tracheals and, you know, out back through the tracheae and out via the spiracles. So we are, because of the activity, because the cellular activity of the insect, that is what is maintaining that concentration gradient, right? So two, right, we are maintaining cellular activity, cellular activity, read respiration, maintains concentration gradient. So that's the second thing. Third, three, high surface area. So again, if you look at this, because we have the branching, we might have a few spiracles on the surface, but each of those spiracles will branch off into many tracheae, and each tracheae will branch off into many, many um, tracheoles right and and as those tracheals branch right they get smaller and smaller and they get closer and closer to the cells so there, there wouldn't be any cells that would be far away from a tracheal okay so the branching increases the branched nature of the tracheals increases their surface area yeah, and there we have it. So that's really what we're talking about here with the insect um, gas exchange system. And what I will say is, you know, general piece of advice on, on this topic is if you focus, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of difficult to, if you think about the um, mammalian gas exchange system and the fish gas exchange system and the insect gas exchange system as separate things that you've got to learn about, it makes it a bit difficult to, to get through all of that. And it makes it a lot of work on your brain to, re to remember and understand these different systems. But if you think of them from the perspective of, well, what do they have in common, right? What they have in common is always, you know, the high surface area, the way they maintain the concentration gradient, and how they, in particular, how they maintain their short diffusion distance. And then all you have to remember is what are the individual ways these different systems address that. Okay, so in, in the case of the insect gas exchange system, they got the short diffusion distance because these branched networks of tracheals are, you know, they're, they're very close to the respiring cells. Okay, there's probably not a lot of cells that are very far away from a tracheal. The tracheoles are very thin and, you know, one cell uh, structures, so, or one cell tubular structures, so, you know, there's a very short diffusion distance from that perspective. Secondly, 
you know, the, the supply of the gases is completely by diffusion. So as the, as the cells become more active, so if the insect is becoming more active, it's, it's using up more oxygen, it creates more of a concentration gradient, and so uh, the rate is always proportional to, to how active the insect is. Okay, so it maintains that concentration gradient because of the continued respiration by the cells. And finally, there, there's this branching network or, or this branching of these tracheoles to such an extent that like if you added it all up, it would make a significantly high surface area. Okay, high enough to supply all the cells on the inside of this organism. Okay guys, so there we have that uh, in this little discussion. We talked about the insect gas exchange system. Um, I hope it has been helpful. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, yeah, and hopefully very soon we'll be continuing our discussion and we'll talk about the fish gas exchange system and then moving on uh, after that to the mammalian gas exchange system. Thank you guys, have a good day, have a good evening, be good, do good things in the world, keep yourself going through these difficult times.